Then we honor to God, our creator, our redeemer, and our provider. We love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. And we love our neighbors as ourselves, as we give honor to Jesus the Christ, to our illuminated Supreme Mother, Mildred Davis Miller, to His Holiness of Blessed Memory, Master Malvin Davis, to all the officers and loved ones of the Spiritual Guidance Temple of Truth, to our families, friends, and loved ones, to the people of all nations, to all living creatures, and to all material manifestations, I greet you with Hotep. Shalom. Peace. Abide. For our scripture, I'm going to read the 90th Psalm. Here, here begins the 90th Psalm, which is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. You are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our indignities before, uh, before you, our secret sin in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70, 70 years or 80, if our strength endures, yet the best of them have but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is, a, is as great as the fear that, you, that it's your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for the many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have been in trouble, um, and many years as we have seen trouble. May our deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. I read the 90th Psalm in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Blessed Mother. Amen, amen, amen. So let's stand for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Thanks be to God for his gift of riches. Thanks be to God for his gifts of joy. Thanks be to God for his gifts of health. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Okay, our song. Is built on nothing should be less even though I put it else down here so let us sing the song my hope is built on nothing less this be on here where did I put it oh. 
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid, Christ and all of the ground is sinking sand. The ground is sinking sand. Okay, now we'll have our meditation. I'll give everybody a moment to get settled. And again, our meditation comes from from um, Sacred Astrology by our Supreme Father Marshall Davis. We'll just land a page and stay there. And it's called The Power of I Am. So please sit up erect. Take a moment and breathe in through your nose. And let it out through your mouth in a double breath. Breathe in through your nose again. Another double breath out. One more time. Breathe in through your nose. And a double breath out. Now repeat after me. I am is never sick because the I am, that I am, is not the body. The I am, that I am, is spirit. I am is the healer that restores the health of my body. I am is never stressed or worried, such as the conditions of the mind and emotional attachments. I am has no fear or dread because the I am is the eternal emanation and being of power that conquers all temporal conditions. I am a spirit of the divine spirit. The I am, that I am, is the image of God, the great divine I am. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. Now we'll do our meditation mountain technique, which you know has, uh, which you should remember has three levels to it. You have the level of concentration, meditation, and then prayer. All of it trying to develop our mental picture, our ability to have a mental picture. So in that first level of concentration, we know that we are to pick something sacred that we're going to focus our attention on. And with each number, you'll be like you make a new wave, a new concentration, a new painting of that picture in your mind uh, to the count of 10. So for that first, remember, pick something that you want to dwell on. It could be a Bible. It could be an image. Uh, it could be a circle. It just can be a dot. But for the count of 10, you're going to concentrate on that one thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So still concentrating on that spot or that thing or image that you have. For the next count, each time we think on it, we're going to see or hear and feel the vibrations from it, the vibrations coming into it and going out. That's what vibrations are. It's coming in and are going out. And it's going to keep vibrating. And as it's vibrating, it's going to bring in a sacred feeling to you. That can, feeling can be hope, can be health, can be joy, it can be bliss. But we're going to do that looking at that object to the count of 10 
and see a wave at each number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now for the last stage, the stage of prayer, you're going to close your eyes and you're going to imagine that you are that sacred point. You are that sacred image. You are that sacred temple of God. And coming in waves into you and then emanating from you of whatever you had been concentrating on, whether it was joy, peace, bliss, righteousness, happiness, and we're going to do that to a count of 10 again. And each time see a new wave of that blessing coming into you and radiating out, radiating out from you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you very much for joining us for that um, meditation. But again, today we're going to be looking at our message for the month of April from our Supreme Father Marshall Davis. You know, each year we pick a message during the Tree of Lifetime, and for each month there is a message for us to to look at and ponder its meaning and it's uh, activities that give us. Because this one gives the activities to me, it gives us a challenge. And this challenge is for, the, uh, for six weeks. This is a six week challenge of you dedicating some time to God. That's why I called this lesson, Honoring God and Your Spiritual Guides. And it's gonna be asking you for a six week period to honor them by giving them some special time. As the message says, take six weeks, six weeks to have silent sessions as a means to become more attuned to divinity. Honor God and your spiritual guides within this silence to be awakened to a higher level. Now, six weeks, if I did my calculations correct, that means 42 days. That for 42 days, you want to have some special silent prayer sessions for 42 days. If we start this in April, if you make April 1st, remember, as it's going to say, you get to decide how you want to do this. But if you start it on April 1st, there are 30 days in April, that means there are 12 more days. So that means from April 1st to May 12th, you want to have some special time that you spend to honor God and your spiritual guides. So I'm going to read over the message. I think it's in, it's short, but it's in two screens. So I'll read the first screen, and then we'll talk about it a little more. Silent sessions with God are your key to unfoldment, prosperity, and victory. Schedule your day by taking moments to pray and decree in silence. Take six weeks to have silent sessions as a means to become more attuned to divinity. Honor God and your spiritual guides within this silence to be awakened to, the higher, to a higher level. During the six weeks, schedule your prayer, silent prayer and study time in this manner. At 4 a.m., rise before the sun. Greet the heavenly hier or hierarchy, or hierarchy at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., which is high noon, a time to seek a place for, you, for just you and heaven to attain your highest. And 6 p.m., the sunset allows the decree of the day to be established within you. Tithe your time with two hours and 40 minutes per day. Your scheduled silence requires go, good, decision, good uh, decisions and strong commitment. Make wise decisions about each scheduled session. How much time can you give at each scheduled hour? You will need to decide which hour you have more minutes to allot in your schedule. Be faithful, I'm sorry, be faithfully engaged and silent. You may need to give more time at sunrise or sunset 
if that works towards obtaining the full two hours and 40 minutes per day. So, so it's saying have these silent sessions and it's saying to look at them as a tithing of your time. Um, and just to be technically correct, here it says two hours and 40 minutes a day, which is almost correct. It actually gives you more time, which is not bad. So you can use the two hours and 40 minutes um, and have that be your tides. But actually, a tenth of a 24-hour day is really two hours and 24 minutes. It's two hours and 24 minutes. You don't have to do the whole, the 40 is to just make sure you have it all. But when you're taking a tenth of what it, what, what it is, if you have 24 hours in a day, then you would be tithing if you get, had 2.4 hours uh, a day. 40 minutes is not 0.4 of an hour. 40 minutes is something like um, two-thirds of an hour, right? So to get a 0.4, and two-thirds is something like 66. So to actually get to saying a fourth of an hour is 24 minutes. So it's saying that for two hours, and like I said, you can use either one. If you, if you want to use the 40 minutes, it's fine. You will have more than enough, be giving more than enough your, in your tithing. But to be very technical about it, it's, you need 24 minutes, two hours and 24 minutes a day. And here it's saying that there are special times when you do this. Uh, the times they're saying that they're suggesting is 4 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m., right? But it's saying that the 4 a.m. is um, meaning rising before the sun, right? So that means you're going to get up before the sun rise and have, uh, have, a, have a prayer session at 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and uh, at 12 noon and 6 p.m. will be times that you can say you want to do something special. And it says that you can kind of schedule it the way you want to schedule it. You can do something, you know, you can kind of schedule these two hours or how you want to do it. And remember, it's supposed to be a, part, a, a combination of prayer. Um, wait, wait, where is it? I forgot, the silence uh, means to become okay. It's a, uh, it's a study time as well as a silent, a si okay, you're right here, it says, um, during the six weeks, schedule your silent prayer and study time in this manner. So it's a, it's a prayer time and it's a study time because to be honest, not everybody can meditate for an hour. But that doesn't mean that you can't study for an hour. Because most of you, you don't think about it, but you'll sit up for an hour and do what? Look at TV. <laughs> Play games. But you, in fact, you'll get up there and you'll binge. You'll get a, a somebody's episode and you sit up there and watch six episodes <laughs> and don't know that you've spent at least, you know, yes, you might go to the commercials, you spent maybe five hours looking at uh, the episodes of whatever it was, you know. Um, so when we try to think about it, when you're trying to do this, it's a study time and a prayer time. I would remind you what you can do is you can set up some times that you will do something special for an hour, uh, which could be an hour or two, or like twice a day or once a day, however you want to do it, but set up a time where you're not necessarily looking at, uh, you know, some a game show or um, some television thing or some series, but take time to say, I'm going to take some time to do some type of study. 
And the study could be, I'm going to take some time to read the Bible each day. I'm going to take some time to get some sacred book, like the Aquarian Gospel. And I'm going to set aside a time that I can just sit there and do what? Read the Aquarian Gospel for, uh, for a period of time. I'm going to, you know, uh, it can be uh, one of Yogananda's books. You can take a Yogananda book and do it. To me, you can even, could you say when you read the Bible, most of us should realize there are videos of the Bible, of people reading the Bible. So if you don't even want to take the time to sit up there and say, I'm going to read the Bible, you can say, I'm going to get one of those videos, and I'm going to take time each day to do what? Listen to that video. Lessons that we have here at the temple. We have, it's like, you know, over 100 recordings of services that we've had, right? Wouldn't it be a time you can say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take some time to go to the website and just listen to a lesson for an hour. Not say anything. So when you, when you, when you look at it as, oh, they're talking about two hours every day. Think of how many things that you might look at and you spend an hour or two on things that are not helping your soul. And all this is saying is, for six weeks, take a time to do that. And, so I'm, and I'm suggesting that you may want to take the two hours as what? As study time. And then add to that, that I'm going to take either the 40 or the 24, and I am going to do special at something at these special times. But if you're doing, trying to fill up the other 24 minutes, with these four times of day that you're going to do something, that means you only have, you, you have a, like six minutes apiece. And most people, you can do some type of prayer or meditation that lasts for what? Six minutes. Like I said, not everybody can do a long meditation, an hour meditation. But can't you do a six-minute meditation or at, at these special times? Can't you take, and if you can't take the six, you know, how, if you can do three minutes or whatever, take those times to be able to still recognizing those four times a day, because those are great hours to, be, to, to recognize. Um, oh, God, I'm going to turn the air down just a little bit. If that's okay. If, if... Shalom. Got some, uh, I guess, coming in. I guess I got this roll on, so it gets, I didn't turn it down a lot, but I. <clears throat> so this is the April message. <laughs> and then after y'all start coming up, it even gets warmer. That's why I said I better do something now because I'll start consecrating now. Forget about it. But here is just saying this is a six week challenge that this message is talking about. Six weeks. If you do it for the month of April, that's 42 days. So that's the, all of April. If you start on April 1st, it's all of April and 12 days of May. So to, from April 1st to May 12th, you can make that as the special silent prayer times. It's asking you to take a tithe of it. And even though it says uh, uh, that would be like two hours and 40 minutes, Technically, uh, uh, the fourth of an hour is 24 minutes. So it's really two hours and 24 minutes. So it's at least two hours and 24 minutes, but can be as much as two hours and 40 minutes. And it gives us certain times that you want to do these prayers. So it's really saying you want to have a morning prayer before the sun comes up. You want to recognize 9 o'clock, noon, and an evening prayer. Uh, that starts out at the end of the day. That's the 6 p.m. Remember, 6 p.m. is saying an evening prayer. So remember, you can pick the times. You can pick the sessions. You can decide that during that time, instead of watching a television show that you watch, and, that, and you see people, they'll sit up there, and they will watch three or four hours binging on something and not complain. And sometimes they will do it every day. Every day they got to do what? 
See Sherry Williams. <laughs> what is Sherry? What what is it? Sherry Shepherd. Not Wendy. I was getting Wendy Williams and Sherry Shepherd mixed up. <laughs> and, 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 and a lot of us, because that shows that I watch too. And you slept and you'll watch them every day and, and will not complain. And some of you have not just one, y'all have a what? A couple of them that you will watch every day faithfully. And all this is asking you is to be for six weeks, for 42 days, be faithful with God with something. Take that time you're spending with God and saying, this is going to be my Sherry Shepherd for 42 days. And, and remember, you don't have to stop watching your Sherry Shepherd. I'm not saying replace Sherry Shepherd. I'm saying if you can find two hours for uh, uh, Sherry Shepherd, and God knows how much time they spend on Morning Joe. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll be quick to say when it's something sacred, say, oh, I can't spend two hours. But do we actually think about how much time we give to other things that we enjoy? And this is just saying, take some time. Because when it's saying honoring, it's really saying, take some time to enjoy God. Take some time to think, of, uh, to enjoy thinking about goodly things. Because, you know, when, when you say silent, silence, the, the, we're talking about the silent sessions. Silent sessions should not be boring sessions. You want to be able to have some feeling about what you're doing. And you're just saying that for, I'm going to, for six weeks, I want to see how good it feels and tastes to spend some time with God. I'm going to spend some time, I, uh, and you can make the decision, you're saying, and here it's saying, make, get those four times of day. You may decide, oh, I can't do those particular four hours. But I can do something every day at a different time. You know, it might not be, that's what it's saying. Get your schedule and decide when it fits into your schedule. But it is suggesting that you wake up before the sun. And why is telling you to wake up for the sun? I guarantee you, if you learn how to wake up before the sun, to do a prayer or meditation, you're going to get a much different feeling out of it. And one of the reasons you're going to get a much different feeling out of it is it's going to be less distractions. It's going to be less distractions. Unless you turn on the TV, it's going to be what? Less distractions. You're, going to not, you're not going to have uh, the 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 noise of things around you at that early morning hour. And it is a much better time to capture that silent feeling at that time. Ah, oh, welcome, come on in. Got two of my sons here today. One of them had a, even a birthday boy. Okay. Shalom, come on in. So with this message, all it's asking for it's during a six-week period for 42 days that you schedule some time to honor God and your spiritual guides. But honor them in such a way that, you, that you're thinking what? This is going to bring me some joy during this time. Not silence, it's not a silence to, please don't think, that you're going to be able to do it for 42 days and you're looking at this is 42 days of boredom. That's not the way you connect with God is saying, I'm going to be, I'm going to be bored and, 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 you know, uncommitted to for 42 days. I don't think anybody, if you think it's going to be boring or if you're planning it, because if you, if it's boring, that means you what? You plan wrong. It's something wrong with the way you planned it. Don't say it's something wrong with God. Because remember, I said with that two hours uh, and, and 24 minutes or two hours and 40 minutes that you're doing, just like when you, when you look at those shows, you do it because of what? It's interesting to you. So you need to find what is interesting to you about God for those 42 days. 
What is interesting to you? That's why I said you can, set through that study time that you pay for those two hours, the Bible may be interesting to you, or you might be of interest in some parts of the Bible. Look at, go to those parts. Some of you have heard and had the Korean gospel around for a long time, but have you ever taken time and said, you know something? I'm going to read the Korean gospel. And even if you know saying you're not going to read it, uh, and can I do this on this machine? Um, I'm going to try to pull this up, but this machine sometimes likes crazy when I try to do these things. Um, do you realize that there's a PDF copy of a Korean gospel? Not a book, it's a PDF copy of it. I think Mr. Bear would know what a PDF is, right? I mean, it's a computer prize thing that you can bring up. And in PDFs, you can um, have the PDF read things to you. It can read the PDF page to you. Why? Because some people can't see. And because they can't see um, that well, the computer has to find ways to, to give it to them. And so most computer programs has a way which they'll call um, uh, voice to speech, I mean text to speech. So the PDF file can actually read the Korean gospel to you. You can set up this. So you, if you don't want to read it, you can go to that PDF file and, um, and have it read the Korean gospel to you. I'm trying to pull it up. Like I said, this computer is, I, I put, I bought in one of my old computers, so this is not the newest computer, and it's not always the, see, just, oh, here's the current gospel of Jesus Christ. See, here's the, it's showing, I've done, been, had it up before, so it's showing my current gospel of G, Jesus of Christ, right? I was trying to open something else, no, go back, cancel that, and open this up. Come on, computer. You see me clicking on this. And y'all see me clicking on this. <laughs> yes, it's not responding. You don't take it, they don't, they don't think about it. It's on the web, right. You can go on the website and pull it up. Uh, yeah, if you go to the website, there's a part in there that says something about resources or something like that. And on the resources, you can pull up, uh, and I think it pulls it up as a PDF. Okay, this is where I left off. I'm going to go, I think it's under view. See, it says reading mode. You turn on the reading mode. And I think you have to go back to it again. And... Read out loud. Wait, is this it? Now it's not. Now it's not going to do it. Come on, view. Did that turn off the reading mode because I, did I have it on already? Oh, it's it's scanning over the document to be able to do it. And remember, this is a slow machine. This is an old machine. It's a slow machine. Your machine should work for faster because it's going to take that whole time to go and evaluate the whole thing so it can get it into a reading mode. When it actually gets it into a reading mode, it will do what? It'll read to you. And it'll start reading to, to you so you don't have to say, oh, uh, uh, and you can just sit up there in your meditation and just let it read the Korean gospel to you. And, and almost all programs, um, have a type of reading mode in them for people who what? Blind or near blind uh, to do that. And I said, this is an old computer, so it's going to take a while time to do that. But take some time to schedule it however you want to schedule it, however you want to try to get to that two hours. And, and if, if you really can't do two hours, think, how much time can I do? Do I have to, and remember, it's saying you're tithing your time. 
So with this two hours and um, 40 minutes a day, you can say, well, I can't, on some days, I can't do two hours. But there's a day that I what? I can. There's a day, I, it's not the two hours, then you got to go by the week. You got to find out how much is when you're tied a whole week. Yes, you can do it right. It's the, yeah, you can get it. You can because remember, if you take those four hours and you do it thirty minutes at a time, you've already got the two hours. All you got to worry about is either twenty-four and forty minutes. And if so, if you do it, um, think like thirty-two minutes. I've forgotten what the number is, but you can say instead of thirty minutes, thirty-two minutes. You got your whole two hours and twenty-four minutes. But you can schedule it however you want to do it. And like I said, you can schedule what you want to do. And in fact, uh, on, on uh, Yogananda's website, here's what? Guided meditations. And you can say for this 42, um, uh, 42 days, I'm going to listen to a guided meditation every day. And I think those guided meditations are at least 30 minutes of a guided meditation. Or maybe someone else you have what? That has guided meditations. Going to tip a website. Yes, because some of our lessons are like an hour and a half. Uh, like, I think the recorded part of it is usually like an hour, hour, 15 minutes by listening to a, an old lesson. Or, like I said, it can be listening to uh, whatever you think would be, uh, would help to inspire you. Because this is about being inspired. And like I said, this old computer, I think, is finally getting to the point where it said it can actually read uh, from the Quran gospel out loud, almost. And if you don't have, if your computer is not as old, this probably won't take that long. Because remember, not only is this an old computer, Chapter but 12. It, it, it's starting to read. Salome's Lessons. Prayer. Ella Hughes' Concluding Lessons. Sums up the three years' course of study. The pupils return to their homes. And this particular program, you got to click on the sentence for it to do it. But when I click on this sentence. Now, when the morning sun arose, the masters and their pupils all were in the sacred grove. Salome was the first to speak, she said. So each time I click on a part, Behold the sun. It manifests the power of God who speaks to us through sun and moon and stars. Through, through mountain, hill, and vale, through flower, and plant, and tree. But that's just to show you that you can make it easy. The computer would what? Read it to you. Through the whole uh, through the whole process, so it's not as difficult as we might think, but you have to do a plan. You have to get something that you might be interested in. You might even want to get some Kindle books also have audio na narration to them, um, so you can get a Kindle book on something and say, "I'm going to take this book and I'm going to either read it in the Kindle or I'm going to what." Listen to the audio of it. There are audio books that you can get. And but get a book that what? That you find inspirational. Don't go out there and look for something boring. And think, for 42 days, I got to do what? Bore myself. And think that's going to get me closer to God. No, don't try to bore yourself for 42 days. Get something that what? Interesting, interests you. And take these 42 days, and it may have been, it may have been a book, uh, a sacred book you've been telling yourself for the longest. Oh, I'm going to read this, this book. Well, for those 42 days, you, you do what? Schedule some time that you are going to read that book. Let's go to the second screen. <clears throat> Say, be sure to let some of your silent uh, sessions be dedicated to studying the inner truth. That's what we're just talking about. It does not, it, it's, it's telling you, most of us, two-hour meditations, not our cup of tea. But if you're studying, because the real 
joy of learning how to meditate is that you're activating your mind. Most people, they never learn how to meditate to activate their mind. They learn how to meditate to do what? They're always saying, it's to relax you. It's to relax you. It's to relax you. Re learning how to meditate to relax is not, about, is not going to help you spiritually to develop. You know what's going to help you to develop? Your ability to relax. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the same zone. Yes, the same zone. You can be thinking on something. Go God. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. And I should have given you the mic. How many people we got on? Amen. Um, well, Dick and, Dick and Jackson can't hear you, but we hear you. And what she's saying, Dick and Jackson, is that you can be taking a shower and be meditating. Uh, you can be uh, anywhere meditating, um, walking to the mailbox and be a part of a meditation set. And when she said that, it made me think about, there used to be a story in the temple, and I forgot the lady's name. Um, one of the temple members used to have this thing where she'd get up there and uh, was be talking about that God came and talk, spoke to her in the privy. And the privy is a was the outdoor toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and she would get up there and testify to that, that God came and talked to her in the privy and told her, you don't have time to duty now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing with your father. Amen. <laughs> they say God is everywhere, right? <laughs> so don't get so uptight thinking every time God has to come to you, it has to be. You know, and this is, you know, uh, um, this completely sad thing. God wants to be able to make a connection with you. And it's that connection, that feeling you have. And in fact, let me, I, I didn't finish reading this. Let me say, be sure to let some of your silent sessions be dedicated to studying the inner truth. Include in your silent sessions decrees, affirmations, visualizations, meditations, and prayers. Develop a schedule for each hour. Design the schedule, uh, the scheduled silent sessions based on the allotted time and the space that you will be, will you be, what you, what, that you will be in at that time. Consider the position of the moon and establish your silent sessions in accordance with the moon phases. Read the 90th Psalm, burn blue candles this month. So it's saying, when you're doing it, think about all those things. Think about what you know about the moon. And one of the reasons you look at the moon is say, is it a rising moon? Is it, um, uh, is it in the first quarter? Is it a full moon time? And say, when your sessions, you can kind of look at the moon and see. Because uh, remember, we look at, like, we ha we're having consecration. That means if we're having a consecration, we just passed a what? A new moon. A new moon is a growing moon, so it's a part of the moon cycle where we feel that the, the moon energy is uh, growing. And after the new moon, it's growing, 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 growing. Then you get to the period of the full moon is what? It's called waning. So it's going down, 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 down. So we're saying, look at when you're, you're thinking about your energy, because we talked about before that in your life, 
uh, and it was the and that uh, Salome's message that was talking about that, that there are different energies at different times. The life is always not at the same energy. Do not work always at the same energy level when you get up in the morning. You can sometimes some mornings you get up, you feel energetic. You can just jump out of bed and run around and and and, and, and you, you know, you can defeat the dragons, slay Goliath. And some mornings you get up and what? It's a struggle <laughs> to put one foot in front of the other. <laughs> but you have to learn how to work with what? Whatever energy. And you'll even find times of life then it's not, and this is what used get me, got me about it, is sometimes when you feel those different energies, you'll find that the people around you are in a similar energy. So it's not just, you just think it's you, but sometimes the people around you are in that similar energy. When, when Aries comes in, and when I was driving in, you know, I, I saw, you know, I always try to remember when uh, Mars is in, and that means in Aries and in Scorpio, because people will be very rash, especially in driving. It's like it's, it's, like it's maniacal. <laughs> They'll jump in front of you, uh, they'll do all kind of, you know, it's just like it, Mars is out there. <laughs> that aggressive, uh, 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 aggr you know, just, they're just more aggressive during that time period. And you have to be aware of those time periods. And you have to think um, about how do you want to connect up with God during those time periods so that you aren't uh, end up killing yourself over something uh, silly. So it's saying to look at all those things and helping to plan your sessions and how to, because it's saying, look at those things to try to get more out of the sessions, not less. But if you think about what you know about the phases of the moon, or what you know about the energy uh, of the time that you're in, um, uh, uh, but for those 42 days, and remember that th this is almost another Lent that you're going through, but Lent will be over and two Sundays, we'll be through with Lent. But then you can still say, but I'm still going to plan some of my time out. So I'm going to work with something sacred. And remember, if I don't get my whole two hours in today, you just have, have it in the plan. How am I going to do it? I might have some time on, more time. I can spend more time on Saturday. I can spend more time on Sunday. You get to put your plan together however you want to put your plan together but make it where you're going to advance in something sacred during that time period. <clears throat> Are any comments or questions so far? But it's real important that when you're doing these prayers and meditations that you include some feeling in it, that you do it for something that's going to be uh, inspiring to you. I know last time, and I'm going to go past some of I'm going past that mountain a bit. Last time we talked a little bit about uh, Deuteronomy 6.5. And you mostly hear me, that I usually say a portion of this before every time, because you're saying giving on to God who is first in my life. I love the Lord my God with all my what? My heart, all my soul, and all my strength. <clears throat> And last time we talked a little bit about what those words meant. What does the heart mean? What does the soul mean? And what does the strength mean? Now, this has the whole thing here. It says, and you shall love the God. And it gives you the Hebrew word and gives you the definition of that word. But what I did is I said, okay, let's just focus on those three words. Your heart, your soul, and your strength. Right? Just those three words out of that. Your heart, your soul, and the strength. Last time I also told you that Jesus mentioned this also. When Jesus, they asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and your strength. He gave four. And last week we talked about why did he have to do four and not three? Why didn't Jesus quote directly for Deut Deuteronomy and say you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength? Why did he say your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength? And I think if we, when we looked at the, the definition of the words, we kind of saw what it means. Because I told you last time 
that the way that the Hebrews and the Jewish people looked at the heart, the soul, and your strength was different from the way that it was conceived by the Greeks and the Romans. They had a different idea. And now we talk about many things. Even now we talk about it. What we talk about when we're saying the heart is not what they meant when they saying by the heart. We go by the, uh, the many things where we're now talking about this battle between the heart and the head. They didn't talk about that. They talked about how do you coordinate your heart, your soul, and your strength. Okay? Not your heart and your head. Because we have all these kind of things, you know, and they're telling you, oh, you can't do things with feelings. But I think you'll find out if you actually understand what these words mean, you'll find out how this thing about the heart and the head is actually caused more, to me, causes more confusion in getting people to understand spiritual things than it helps them to understand them, unless you take it back to the original. Here, when we talk about the, G, the, the Hebrew word for the heart, and I'm going to go over this again, um, you may not see it because this is in blue. The word is ha, uh, aha baka. Aha baka is the word they use here for your heart. But then when you go to strong, Strong's and it tries to tell you what that means mean, in the yellow you see it talks about strong word 3,824. It says the heart in Jewish thought meant the inner man, the mind, the will, and the heart. Their word ahava or ahabaka meant the inner man, your mind, the will, and your heart. Can you see that? Do you see that it has both the mind and the heart in that word? So when Jesus had to translate that into Greek, he had to do what? He had to put both of them in there. Because Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind. If he was been speaking Hebrew, he would not have had to say heart and mind. He would only have to say heart. Because the heart already represented the mind to them. They believed that the, when they talked about their heart, they were talking their mind. So a lot of passages when we look in the Bible where it talks about the heart, it's talking about what we call now the mind. Okay, so and it talks about the will, and we're going to come back to the, with this will. So, what do they mean when they talk about the soul? The word here they're using for the soul is the nefshik, the, the uh, nefshika, nefshika, which is nefesh from the word nefesh, nefshika. <clears throat> and so, the nefshika it means a soul, a living being, your life, yourself, your person. And look at this, your desire, your passion, your appetite, and your emotion. So when it's talking about something coming from your soul, it was talking about something that was coming from like desires within you. The feelings, what we would call sometimes our feeling, or even the appetite and the emotions within you when it was talking about soul. Now, now we think about, when we talk about the heart, we're talking about the emotions and feelings, right? But when they were talking about the emotions and feelings, they were talking, and your desires, they were talking about things that came from your what? Your soul. So therefore, when they're telling you about trying to develop your soul, you're actually trying to develop your ability to have compassion for others, have feelings for others. And to me, that changed a whole lot of things when you're looking in the Bible and you start looking at, even when it talks about the Beatitudes, and it start, talks about things like um, um, uh, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are they who mourn, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. When you start looking at those things, too often we're thinking about how you, these things can help change your mind, but the mind doesn't conceive them as, better, as well as, suppose we looked at those things as Jesus was telling you about how to develop this soul that they're talking about, how you're developing your, your passions, your appetites, your emotions, and your desires when he was saying, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Because emotionally, what does it feel to like to be po uh, poor in spirit? Not mentally, but emotionally, what it feels like to be poor in spirit, to be able to feel that you need more spirit in your life, emotionally. He's saying those people are the ones who what? who weep the blessings of their prayers. 
when you can mourn for something, that's saying that when you put that emotional context to life and the things happening to your life, you're activating your soul, not activating your mind, you're activating your soul. When you will take the time to stand up, even though you might be persecuted for righteousness sake, your mind does not tell you that. Your mind doesn't tell you to be, per be persecuted just to be right. But your soul will tell you what? Stand up and be persecuted just because you're right. Your soul can tell you about um, being a peacemaker. Your mind doesn't always tell you to be a peacemaker. Your mind will tell you what? Go somewhere and be safe. And a peacemaker is one who goes out there and makes peace happen. A peacemaker is not one to just sit up there and say, well, I'm just not going to do nothing. A peacemaker is a person that's doing what? Make peace happen. That has to come from your soul. And then the last part is his strength. And when he said, and the word for strength means you do it vehemently. You do it wholly. You do it speedily. But this is when you think of what? I'm working with my soul. These are things from the soul. So we need to learn how to, as we're doing these things, as we learn how to do these prayers, how do you get that feeling behind it? And the feeling is no, it, and it doesn't have to be the type of emotions that, oh, we said you got to shout and you got to yell and you got to put on a big show because a lot of times that is just fake emotion. That's not really coming from your soul. But you need to be able to say, this is coming from my inner desires to be close to God. And so when you're trying to connect up in this, because remember it talked about for the next, for 42 days, you want to try to develop this special, uh, your special relationship with God through silent interaction. For 42 days, you're going to try to spend 10% of your time in trying to connect up with God and I'm saying you're supposed to be trying to connect up with God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And I actually believe that the soul is a big key to that. Because if I go back to that page, when it talked about the mind, it talked about the will. When it talked about the soul, it talked about desire. Is there a difference? Or does anybody see a difference between when you're doing something from your will and when you're doing something from your desires and passions? Nobody's speaking up, so I'm going to give what I see it in difference in them. The will is more of something that you do through a conscious intention, isn't it? When you're doing something through your willpower, you are consciously intending to do that. And usually when you have a conscious intention, you usually have what? Some kind of material goal or something in mind. That's when you will something. You, you want to get somewhere and you're trying to consciously try to get to that point. But when you're talking about a desire within you, sometimes that, or most of the time, that desire comes something from you that's so innate within you that if someone asks you to explain why you even wanted it or what you were trying to achieve for it, then what? You desire it. Like if somebody tried to, if you like vanilla ice cream and somebody said, oh, why do you like vanilla instead of chocolate? Can most of us explain whatever is our favorite ice cream? To, can we explain why we like that flavor above another flavor? It comes from like from a desire within you that you really, uh, it's like, un, it's like it's, and you know it's in you, and, but you know if somebody tried to get you to eat the other one and there's the other one there, you don't, do, do not want that one. You want the one you want, the one you desire.
And now I'm going to go to another saying that I'd like to bring here from Jesus. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there you what? There your heart will be also. Now, when he's talking about a treasure, isn't he talking about a desire? So he's saying where your desires are, your mind will do what? Because he said heart. We said heart meant the mind, the will, right? So Jesus is telling them your treasure, the things that you get from the, your, your soul, will even force your mind to do what? To follow them. And I think he uses the word treasure because all of us don't use our soul as a source of our treasures. And that's why he's saying, why treasure things that do pass away? Why put our desires on things that are what? Of the material and are not going to last? Why use our, our, our desires? Because what we'll do, we'll confuse our soul desires with our what? With our human passions. And we'll get lost because if you confuse your soul desires with your human passions, you'll end up setting your mind off in what? The wrong things. What? Or something else. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because they haven't. Mm hmm. Yes. The, the, some, the, the passion is someone else because people, because we try to alter and instill in them a passion for money, which is not, not the best thing for them. Because really, if, you, if you're trying to inspire a child to be a doctor or anything, you should first look and see if that child has the inclination to be in that thing. Because that is what's going to help drive him, that desire or passion within that person. And I find that life will kind of show you where you need to go. And a lot of times we don't look at with the child, we look at our lives and the things that we wanted to have, and then we're trying to say, oh, you my child, I want you to follow in the things that I wanted. Instead of saying there are passions within that child, and the hard thing about being a parent is trying to let that child connect up to their soul's passions. And even not their childish passions, because some of their ch passions are childish still. But what is that soul passion? What is that soul pushing that child to be? And how can I connect up to that? And you can find out that if you can get that child connected to their soul passion, the thing within them that moves them, they will move further. Because they will flourish. Because they understand, because in their, their, their soul inside of them, they understand that better. Usually the thing that you, that you like, you understand it better. It sparks your interest. And when you're working with the soul, you're trying to uh, dig deep to make sure that you've gotten uh, what uh, Glenn Clark calls, uh, and this comes from a book, um, I've Lifted My Eyes. You need to go get, try to find that soul sincere desire. Because a lot of times, we've, even though it's deep within us, we haven't dig deep within that desire to see, why do I feel that way? Sometimes you have to kind of clear some of the other outer layers of it to get down to the deep part of it. But I'm going, but this is supposed to have been a short lesson, right? But from the message, it's challenging you. For the next 42 days, to spend some special time developing your, I'm going to say from my way of looking at it, developing your heart, 
your mind, and your strength. I'm going to say your heart, your soul, and your strength. Knowing that if you let the soul lead, it'll bring the other two with it. If you start looking from that passion within you, so you want to make these sessions that you're going to do during these next 40 to the 42 days. Remember, we said if you start at April 1st, you will go from April 1st to May 12th. We we'll give you the 42 days that you're going to have these special sessions. Anybody have any questions about that? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the two, and uh, like I said, you can break down the two hours however you want. It did give you some times it said you should take some special time at these uh, at at four o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, six o'clock or somewhere where you're doing four days like you're doing a morning. You're doing a nine o'clock somewhere around noon and you're doing an evening time. Um, and here it says two hours and 40 minutes. You'd be taking a tithe of the day. But technically, 10% of a day is how much? Two hours and 24 minutes. Two hours and 24 minutes. Um, I think he did the math too quickly. He just said 24 hours, that's two hours and 40 minutes. But actually, uh, an hour is only 60 minutes. If an hour is 100 minutes, that would be true. But an hour is not 100 minutes, it's only 60 minutes. So it actually makes it worth two hours in 24 minutes. So anywhere between two hours and 24 minutes and two hours and 40 minutes, you'll make sure that you're in that tithing range. And with that two hours, you part of it is study time. So you just just for those that that period uh, between April 1st and May 12th, you'll say I'm going to do a special study time that I'm going to um, uh, uh, read the Bible for an hour or two or I'm going to um, uh, read another book, a sacred book that I wanted for that, for that time each day. Uh, and we're gonna do it and, and we wanna be as faithful in it as we would be if we was walking, watching the Sherry Shepherd show, right? She said, she said, now she wants, now she wants to get the consequences. <laughs> okay, some more people coming in. Y'all come over there. Hello, hello. So have that special time. Know with that special time that, um, that you want to do something that's going to be inspiring. Don't try to schedule two hours and something every day of this is going to be a boring uh, boredom time. Time where I'm going to sit up there and I'm going to bore myself for two hours and 40 minutes a day and think that's going to get me closer to God. Look for something that's interest you and in saying for these six weeks, which is 42 days, that I'm going to find something that I'm interested in about God. It might be looking into the Bible, looking to a sacred book you like, uh, looking at um, guided meditations during that time. And I'm going to give some time at my own schedule. I'm not saying don't take my schedule, but you take a schedule that you want to have, that you can have some special time with God and see if it doesn't give you a special lift. Anyone have any questions about that? But this is from our April message from our Supreme Father Marshall. Uh, just go over some of our announcements that um, we're still in the last week of Women's History Month. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Our Easter baths are going to be from April 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, so if you would like to get a bath, uh, please give me your name because next I'll be making them and probably getting them out next Sunday. Um, Good Friday is April 7th. Easter is April 9th. Uh, tax day, let's put that in there for you all, is April 18th this year. So make sure your taxes are in by April 18th. And our next consecration will be on April 
23rd. And today is my son's birthday. So has anyone else had a, a close birthday? Because we want to sing happy birthday to him. Malcolm. My son Malcolm. It's his birthday today. That's right there. Uh, but let's stand and sing happy birthday to him, please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Malcolm. Happy birthday to you. We love you, we do. We love you, we do. We love you, dear Malcolm. We love you, we do. <laughs> you probably have to lead it. <laughs> what is it? Happy birthday, Malcolm. Happy birthday, <laughs> birthday. Well, but, but thank you for being with us. Uh, I know we have some people online, so we want to close out for them. And thank you for the various ways that y'all make donations to us, whether it's through Cash App or Zelle at 954-549-4713. Or uh, Zelle, you can also send to us at offerings at spiritualguidancetemple.org or going to our website at www.spiritualguidancetemple.org and there is a donation button on the right-hand side of the page. But for, um, for, our, for our, our guests online, we're going to close out so we can get to our consecration. So let me say, may the love of God loon at your way. May the will of God direct you each day. May the truth of God all errors depart and may the peace of God forever dwell in your heart. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, and before I totally stop the um the recording let me say was there somebody online that would like oh he's left the meeting okay so um i'll stop the recording